What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, real quick before I start today's video, I just wanted to give you guys a quick shout out. Thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. I hit it like a week or two ago, I think, but the fact that I hit a thousand subscribers already is fucking crazy. I know it's not a lot to a lot of people watching, but the fact that a thousand people decided to go down and click the subscribe button means a lot. Thank you guys. And then also thank you guys for all the support and love on the last few videos. They've all been getting a lot more views than usual. I would have never been able to get the second 240 without the motivation that you guys give me to be able to make more videos. This is literally barely the beginning. You guys are literally the first people to support me and it's just gonna keep growing from here. So I know a lot of the people watching don't usually comment, but if you're watching this, even if you never comment on any other video, because I never comment on any other videos, so I understand. But you guys are literally the first people to support me. So comment down below on the videos. Tell me what you guys think. Literally just say hi, anything. Like I reply to every single comment. There's a few people that have commented on every single video for the past, like, I don't know, for the past year. So I do recognize you guys. I remember you guys' usernames, everything. Like it's just crazy. Like I'm just talking to a camera, but at the same time, I'm talking to so many people that choose to watch my videos. So like I said again, thank you guys. It really means a lot. And this is just the beginning. There's so much more. A huge thank you and shout out to all the people that order stuff from our website. Um, so I have two clothing brands. I have September 7th and I have Stuck in Neutral. And I'm sure a couple of you guys have bought from September 7th, but I know most of you guys probably purchased from Stuck in Neutral. That's kind of the brand that I revolve around this YouTube channel. It's not that bullshit merch that all these other YouTubers have. Like this is literally like, I have another clothing brand and you can go check that one out. The quality on that is insane. It's literally like, like I said, it's not a blank. Everything's cut and sewn. Like the quality on these garments is unmatched and it ships next day. Like a lot of you guys know I don't work. I haven't worked in months. I might start a new job soon to be able to afford the build on the next 240. But yeah, supporting my brands is the best way to support me. I just wanted to give another quick thank you to everyone who purchases from those because it really means a lot. If you guys order from Stuck and Neutral, you guys can leave a note and I read every single note. Like. Edgar season two as well. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick shout out for that because that really means a lot. If it wasn't for those brands, I wouldn't be able to keep recording videos. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot. I really appreciate every single one of you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back to working on the drift hatch. It's right here in front of me. I literally just got here and I'm gonna get straight to work, but I have done a couple things on the car that I haven't showed you guys. Basically the car hasn't started yet. I've been working on it a little bit, but I haven't been recording much of it because it's all boring stuff that I don't think anyone would wanna watch anyway, so. But let me catch you guys up on everything I've done in the past like week or two. I'm gonna just walk around and give you guys an entire walkthrough on everything I've done. The fenders aren't actually on, they're just sitting on, but I'm gonna be putting the fenders on today because I finally tidied up the wiring harness around the car. So right now I'm gonna take these off and show you guys that. It's basically just been a bunch of testing that I haven't recorded like in the last video as you guys saw I can't figure out why the car is not starting we can start it a little bit now but it doesn't stay alive so that's what I'm gonna be trying to do today I think I know why it's not starting so hopefully by the end of tonight it's able to idle so that then I can move on to the last step of putting all the fluids in it and getting the car to actually run and be able to be driven out of here but let me take off these fenders so I can show you guys the wiring harness tightening that I did underneath just in case any of you guys have like a loose wiring harness, I'm gonna show you guys how I did mine. And I think it's gonna work out pretty good. So I started from right here and basically for the entire thing, I, I was just using a bunch of zip ties. It might not look the best, but it works and the wiring harness isn't gonna go anywhere. So underneath the car, I didn't actually tuck the wiring harness past the fender because a lot of people, what they do is right here behind this uh, bar, because a lot of people don't have this bar, they'll cut two slits into the metal and then fold that piece up and then they'll tuck the wiring harness in through there and tuck it across here. This car has always been super low and it's never rubbed the harness. As you can see, my harness is not rubbed, but I think that's just because I have some really stiff coils underneath the car so it doesn't let the wheel uh, ever get to that height. I didn't want to remove these bars right here um, or cut into my chassis, so all I did is I just tucked it up as high as possible. But I'll check on it in a few weeks after the car is running, make sure it's not rubbing. If it's rubbing, then I'm going to take off this harness bar, tuck it, and then put the harness bar back, hopefully. But for now, I think this should be good. And I just followed it through here this is the side marker light but i don't even have side marker so it doesn't matter and i just did the same thing over here i tightened on the box right here with a bolt and then i just put some zip ties um inside the car so basically the harness everywhere is pretty stiff it's not gonna go anywhere this is what i did to the front i just tucked in these wires right here and then over here there's a few more zip ties like throughout the front that everyone's just gonna be able to see but i mean fuck it i just have the harness tucked up underneath the core support it's not gonna go anywhere, it's pretty secure. I got the horn brackets on, the headlights on, on both sides, everything's nice and secure. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, I just zip tied everything down here, cleaned it up. And then same thing on this side as the other side. I just have the wires hanging across. And then same thing up here. 
Yeah. You guys saw a few videos ago, me and David, we bought a whole battery tray because originally I was gonna put the battery in the trunk, but honestly, I'm gonna just keep it here because I don't wanna deal with having to put it in the bag. I could always do that later. We got that battery box and I cut a lip off of it. You can see it down there a little bit, right here. I'll take it out right now to show you guys, but I just used my Dermo and I cut all around the box um, just to basically make a tray. And it's not bolted in right now, but I'm gonna bolt the tray in and the battery's gonna be able to sit in there just so the battery's not just sitting on the metal. I just gotta drill some holes in the tray to make sure that if any water gets into the battery tray, it'll just seep down to the ground. Cause that's why the battery trays on the stock 240s rust. They don't have any drainage holes. So once water gets in there, it just sits. And then yeah, like I said, basically we were just doing a bunch of tests. I don't know what else you guys haven't seen. We got the radiator hoses on, everything, the entire cooling system is done. The fuel system is done. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Me and David were just running tests on fueling, spark, air, everything. Just basically trying to pinpoint why the car's not starting. Earlier today, I actually took like an hour drive just to find a coupler for the stock airbox. And I found it and it fits, so I'm gonna show you guys that. Hopefully this is the last piece of the puzzle and then I'll be able to secure everything up right now. All right, so this is the stock airbox I'm gonna use. I don't wanna use the cold air intake one. Um, I'll show you guys why. It has to do with this nozzle right here. Cause on the other intake that I have, this nozzle is on this side. The hose has to make too much of a curve and it crimps right here at the corner. Um, so I'm gonna use a stock air box. I always wanted to use this, but I just didn't have the coupler, but I ended up finding a 2.75 coupler and I wanna go pick it up today because I needed it ASAP for tonight. So I got the coupler, shout out HPS. Bro, they have the coolest waiting room ever. They literally have a 2J just chilling in their uh, waiting room. But yeah, I have the intake sorted. I'm gonna use a stock air box with the stock MAF. It's a brand new MAF. The first step for today is I'm gonna put that intake on the car right now and I'm gonna get the intake finalized. Basically get the car tidied up. I'm also gonna go around and put the exhaust on the car because right now I only have the headers, but I'm gonna put the rest of the exhaust on. I'm also gonna put the slave cylinder underneath on the transmission because that's not hooked up yet. I'm gonna just put it just so it's ready because I have a brand new slave cylinder because the one I had underneath the car just rusted to death. I also have a new fuel filter. I'm gonna change the fuel filter right now to a Z32 one. I also changed the gas on the car. Uh, me and David actually pumped all the gas out and we put brand new gas in it. And that's why we also changed the filter because the old gas was not, like super like orange. It's been sitting for like 10 months, so maybe it lost detonation. And gas nowadays sucks. Like the ethanol level in gas is terrible. Um, and it's just not, like I heard that gas can lose its detonation nowadays, like in a few months, like four or five months. I changed the gas, it still didn't start, so that wasn't the issue, but it has fresh gas in it. I'm gonna change the fuel filter, put the air intake on. You guys have no idea how much of a headache this car has been, man. I can't wait to hear this shit started. Let's get started. Thing that I wanted to do out of the way uh, besides the fenders and the slave but honestly I think I'm gonna just try and crank the car right now see what it sounds like and show you guys coupler worked beautifully shout out HPS everything's nice and tight there should be no leaks through here I found another hose that fit better and I put clamps on both ends I'm gonna try and start it see what it sounds like this hose should be good this is capped the, the port underneath here is capped as you can see down there uh, that hose clamp is attached math is connected TPS is connected fuel system should be good but let's try and start it right now and see what happens Hopefully it has enough juice in the battery um, without having to jump it, but I'm not gonna give it any gas, just crank. The idle air screw valve is also almost all the way closed. Nope, battery's way too dead. All right, let me connect this to the Corolla and then I'll come back. I have one more thing I'm gonna try. Um, so I know there is a possibility that the fuel lines could be switched. In the front, they're good, but I did have to drop the gas tank. And if you guys saw a video like two videos ago, I had to drop the gas tank because there was a fat ass gas leak. So there is a small possibility that I switched the lines at the top of the top hat. And maybe in the front it looks good, but maybe in the back it's reversed. I don't know, but I'm gonna change the fuel lines in the back because there is a slight possibility, like I said, because I did change one of those lines out. and. I don't know, I'll try it again and see what happens. All right, what time is it? It's 2.50, it's three in the morning. <laughs> We've tried everything. I changed the fuel pressure regulator, sorry, it still didn't start. So I just switched back to the stock one and I'm gonna go return another one, cause bro, that shit was a hundred bucks for a fuel press, what? At least I know the fuel's right, um, the routing and everything's correct. But I give up, bro, this shit, I can't figure out why it's not starting. We've tried everything. Literally everything. Well, I'll see you guys next time. God damn it. Check out second neutral. Oh yeah, check out. 
bro, I'm so over this car. I'm so fucking depressed. Go cop a shirt or something. Make me feel better. It's so close, but so far. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. What's up everyone? I don't even know what day it's been. It's been like, it's like the fifth or sixth day working on this shit. I got a really good update for you guys today. I've been working on the car a little bit off camera just because it's like I said, I couldn't get the car to start and there was no point in just recording all the tests that we were doing. But I did work on it like two, three days and I still couldn't figure it out. But I have a really good update today, hopefully. I haven't started the car since then, but fingers crossed. Check this out. The car finally starts. It didn't want to start right up right there, but yesterday when I was doing it, it started right up. But the car finally starts. I'm gonna show you guys what the problem was. I, like I told you guys, I checked everything. Spark, fuel, I tore apart the entire fuel system, put it back together like I was going fucking crazy, but I finally figured it out. I had never heard the car running while I was outside of the car. Every single time that me and David were out here, I was the one inside keeping the car alive. But this time, I was keeping the motor alive from the outside through the throttle body and I heard a huge vacuum leak, but I couldn't figure out where it was. Basically, I used one of those puff bars and I blew smoke in through here. I disconnected this and I blew smoke in through there. I think I put it in one of the old clips, but that's how we did like a ghetto smoke test. We pushed the vape smoke through the intake manifold and we just looked for leaks. And there was, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's this bolt right there. There's a bolt right under that hose right here. That bolt right there. And that's where the leak was coming from. I put that screw on there, went to crank the car, and it started right up. There was no issues. And then right now, when I tried starting it, it didn't start with the key, but I had to give it a little bit of gas, and it actually stayed alive. Um, but as you saw, like I took my foot off the gas, and the car idles fine. Uh, I even got to time the car with the timing gun and everything, so it should be good. That was really late last night. And now basically all that's left for today is to put the fenders on, the slave cylinder, fill up all the fluids on the car, transmission fluid, diff fluid, coolant, power steering, bleed the brakes clutch and the car should be able to drive hopefully but I'll check back in once I have someone that's here able to help me bleed the brakes I don't know who's gonna be able to help me but I need someone to help me bleed the brakes in the clutch oh one last thing before I start you guys aren't gonna be able to see it but there's a PCV valve underneath it's that block right back there right on the tip of my finger that metal block right there that's the PCV valve and it's completely open so I need to recirculate that I'm probably gonna recirculate it right here on this intake port right here. It looks like it's the same fitting, so I need to recirculate that back into here. That needs to be recirculated. That's what lets all the emissions, all the unburnt gas out of the bottom end of the car. So I'm gonna recirculate that, and I'm gonna make sure that there's no more vacuum leaks, and just tidy up the rest of the car, and it should be driving today, hopefully. All right, let's get started on everything else. I'm gonna put the fenders and all that shit, just time lapse it, and I'll check back in in a bit. I've been messing with the car for a few hours. I had to stop because I ripped the intake manifold gasket. I had to take the manifold off to be able to put a hose on the PCV valve so I could recirculate it to the throttle body. I took off the manifold and I put a hose on the PCV valve and I rerouted it back to here. So that should be good enough. But while I was taking off the manifold, I ripped the gasket so I had to go to AutoZone and buy another gasket. I can't even put the gasket on by myself. There's so much resistance against the manifold, I can't move it and put the gasket in there at the same time. Um, so I had to wait until someone has to come help me. I mean, I had to wait for someone either way because I had to do the brakes and the clutch. Yeah, so I'm kind of at a standstill until someone can come help me out. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put fluid in the transmission and the diff because I don't, I think I should be able to do that. I'm gonna just hook up the pump and put fluid inside until it starts dripping out of the fill plug and it should be good. After those two fluids are done, I'm gonna put this manifold gasket back on with someone's help, bleed all the lines, and then the car should be ready to start bleeding the coolant. And then after the coolant's bled, it should be ready to drop down and drive. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself, but I really wanna get this car driving today. Even if it's super late, I just wanna get it driving and get it out of here. We'll see what happens. Um, right now, I'm just waiting for someone to come help me out. And yeah, I'll give you guys an update whenever I have one. All 
the fluid is basically drained out. Uh, the car's kind of tilted, so there might be a little bit of fluid, but that's fine. Shout out Valvoline, shout out TJ Hunt. This is the fluid we're gonna be putting inside the diff right now. And it comes inside like a flexi bottle, so hopefully I should be able to squeeze this up onto the drain plug. And basically I'm gonna just keep filling this with fluid until fluid starts dripping out of the drain plug. And then I'll plug it. I think the oil level should be literally right below under there, just like any other diff, so. Oh, and also, don't forget, on your drain bolts and fill plug, always use some thread sealer. I'm gonna use some thread sealer, put it on there. I'm gonna put the drain plug back on it and fill it back up with fluid and then move on to the transmission. There we go. I think I put too much and it wasn't letting it come out, but I'm gonna just let it drip, plug it back up, and then the dip's good. All right, little update. Got the homie Jesus Poggy with me. If you guys watched the videos from the very beginning, like the first few weeks I was making videos, you remember this fool. He's never been like working on the cars and shit, but he's, he's been like the background of videos and stuff before, but he's gonna help me out today. Bleed the brakes, the clutch, and then put the manifold gasket on, cause I literally have no help to be able to do that. I can't do that by myself. First but, you gotta eat though, bro, you feel me? Cause I'm hungry, bro. Nah. Chris is hungry. Look at me, bro. It looks, like I, it looks like I haven't ate in six months, bro. Got him some food. Yes, sir. You already know, bro. I'm gonna eat. You know, I came through with the rescate, bro. <laughs> We're gonna eat real quick, and then um, while he's here, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna use a taste test real quick. Hold on. All right. Carl Jr. Jalapeno popper. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's 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 pretty good. Got finished eating, I'm full as fuck, don't want to work on this shit, but I, you got to do what you got to do. Alright, so right now I mean Jesus, he's going to help me out. I'm going to teach him how to bleed the brakes too. Right now we're just going to bleed the brakes and the clutch. You guys already know how to do this, so I'm not going to really record it. When I painted the engine bay, I completely disconnected the brake and the clutch cylinder. So there's literally no fluid in here at all. So we just have to be really careful that uh, no air gets into the system and we keep topping off the cylinders. And then I'll check back in once we're about to fill up the transmission and just basically tidying everything up. I'll just give you guys an update later, but... That's what we're gonna do right now. Hopefully it doesn't take too long and hopefully everything goes smooth. David's under the car. He came through after school. Yes, sir. And we're putting uh, transmission fluid in the car right now. Make sure you use MT90 and only MT90 for your 240. It costs a lot, but it's worth it. We're gonna keep pumping fluid until it drains out of the fill plug. Same thing that I did with the diff. It's red. Oh, sick it. Nah, this is harder than the one. I wanna go home. All right, little update, it's been like an hour. Uh, we just did small shit. Um, I got the manifold back on, uh, the gaskets in there. What else? Everything is nice and tied up, tidied up over here. We put some clamps on the power steering. Literally everything on the engine bay is 100%. It should be ready to turn on. The next step right now is, the last step is bleeding the coolant. Well, not the last step. We, I still have to put the fenders and the bumper and shit, um, but that's the last step like mechanically. So before we, you have to, <laughs> we have to keep the car alive to be able to bleed the coolant and the car is loud as fuck right now because it doesn't have the exhaust on it only has the headers so we're gonna put the stock exhaust back on just so it's a little bit less loud and then after the exhaust is on in like 10 minutes uh we're gonna bleed the coolant and that should be it after that i'm gonna put the fenders on and the bumper or maybe just the fenders and i might try and drive it out of here tonight but yeah that's pretty much it i'll check back in once we're actually beating the car and putting on the fenders and shit and hopefully hopefully driving it out today if everything goes good Finally, we're at the last step. Everything is straight. We just put the stock exhaust back on. I do have an exhaust leak, so it's gonna sound like shit, but I'm gonna turn on the car right now. And we're gonna bleed the coolant. Literally the last step, besides fenders and bumper, of course, but I don't know if I'm gonna do this today or not. I'm gonna put coolant in there right now. We're gonna put the funnel, bleed the coolant. So now you guys are gonna hear the, how the car sounds, how it idles for a bit. Everything should be good. I already timed the car with the timing gun. It should be straight. Hopefully everything's straight. I'm gonna put a little bit more gas in the tank because I think it barely has anything. And um, hopefully everything goes good with the coolant bleeding process, but. That's the last step. All right, I'm gonna record that and check back in after, see what else I fucking do today. All right, the car needs gas because it barely has anything. <laughs> but the, the gas tank doesn't fit because this hits my gas door right here. It doesn't fit. So we have to pump it in. Oh, and there's a filter in here, so we can't just put this straight into there. 
So we're just filling up a water bottle one by one with gas and then pumping it in. This is gonna take a minute, but I have an idea right now. What if we get this? Nah, that's just too big. I'll go like this. No, nah, hell no. Nah. That's just gonna leak on your hands, dog. Huh. <laughs> What's the predicament? I got another crazy idea. What if I cut a hole in this, put this bitch in there, and you just keep feeding gas and he just keeps pumping? Oh, yeah, that could, yeah, that could work too. That shit will go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it. Ah, <laughs> oh, you better be pumping. Right, yeah, you gotta just pump it. Hey, oh, shit. Hey, but the, you have the ability to stop it whenever. You just have to All pull right. it out. Alright, just let me know. Let me know, you can see. <laughs> let me know, like, let me know. Like. Nah, we bees. Hold on, hold on. Nah, I keep going, what? That shit hurt my feet. Oh. <laughs> Ain't no way. This, I've never thought in a million years I'd be filling up a fucking car like this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> This should stop working too. Alright, good. Right. So what happened, Jesus? Wait, how much? <laughs> hey, if it works, it works, bro. Right? <laughs> That's some good, no? Now, there you go, guys. We're going across the country, my boy. <laughs> Imagine walking by and seeing three Mexican kids doing this. It looks like we're stealing the gas. I'll put it away, I'll put it away. Go, hurry up! <laughs> I had a headache from laughing so much. <laughs> my forearms are on fire, dog. <laughs> oh my god, he on SK. I cannot believe that worked. Nah, like David said, I got enough gas in here to go cross country. Oh Alright, now we can finally turn on the car and be the cool. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Oh, yeah. Nah, this shit don't even fit in here. There's what? different fittings. There's different fittings. Use fucking smart. Come on, Chris. My fault, OG. Let me see. This, let me see. Oh, this this fits inside good. Oh, like. but look, these this goes right here. You got the way inside. Oh, that one might work. But it needs to be those two is like, yeah. Bro, I look, I have this cap. This is this is gonna be for this part. You, you gotta get it. Wait, wait, wait. You gotta get it. That way, no say. Yeah. No. No idea, bro. Nah, it has to be this one. Are you sure, or is it not supposed to be like? Look, this is the gasket, this is the pocket, and it fits perfectly like that. The and then that one would we'll tighten it. Well, technical difficulties. We figured it out. Don't add too much, we're like for leaks. Yeah, keep an eye out on, on leak patrol, David. My booty patrol. I'm, I'm. Can you put my sock please? Yeah, I got you. Are <laughs> so you going other one too. Yeah, other one, bro. Dirty ass fucking socks. Alright, <laughs> 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 oh, bro. Look at these shorts. My boy, like, homeless. <laughs> I just want my car to run, bro. <laughs> Watch, how did it leak out? Good, good, good. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Chug, 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 ¿Qué pasó, güey? ¿Tienes cambio suelto, güey? ¿Cuánto? Nomás un, un billete o algo, algo para comer, com no comprar mames. comida o algo. ¿Un billete nomás? Eh, nomás no, no mames, güey. ¿Qué quieres comprar, güey? ¿Qué ocupas? Ah, pues, la verdad, una hamburguesa o, no sé, un herramienta para llevar el carro o algo. Eh, güey, ve a comprar el pinche five star dinner, güey. Ten. ¿Y qué más verdad, ocupas, güey? ¿Qué más? ¿Unos nuevos no, rines, güey? No, pues, wey? ya. Ten, güey. Para los nuevos rines, cabrón. No, ¿Qué más wey? quieres, güey? ¿Otro uh, pinche 240, güey? No, pues, está Ten, bien, ya. Wey. Cómprate otro. Oh, güey, otro sufre, pero este no, viejo. Para que te compres otros pinches rines, güey, porque este pinche carro está bien jodido, güey. ¿Qué pinche es eso de un pinche dólar, teo? Disfrute la vida, cabrón. That was Kwame R. Alright, 
we tried it you guys saw i don't know if it was bleeding properly i don't know if it has another vacuum leak but the car stays on the lights on my dash aren't working my speed i mean of course my speed's not gonna go up but my revs don't work they were working before my revs don't work the coolant temp doesn't work my gas is still reading properly but that's weird maybe i blew a fuse all right um i'm gonna fuck around with it still and uh, give you guys an update soon but i mean for the most part nothing leaked i messed with the idle a little bit i turned the screw closer a little bit you guys heard the idle go down a little bit but yeah everything seems pretty good i just gotta figure out these little minor details i'm gonna keep fucking with it and give you guys an update when i can all right little update what time is it bro it's already late it's 1 42 in the morning like you guys saw the car turns on and everything the idle is kind of a little bit rough still uh i think there's still a small vacuum leak um i'm gonna buy an actual smoke tester to test it but i don't know it's weird it's weird that my dash doesn't work and i don't like that it's not working because it's not letting me read my temperature so i can't tell if it's up to operating temp or not and you like you guys saw it wasn't taking any more coolant it took a little bit more coolant but i don't know if it bled properly basically we did a lot on the car today basically everything literally everything besides the fenders and the bumper is literally all it needs to drive um I think I still need to bleed the clutch a little bit too because it felt a little bit weird. I've been working on this car for like 12 hours straight today already. A big update too, I start working at a new job. I haven't worked in fucking months, like you guys know. Probably even like a year or something. I start next week, so I really want to get this car started by then. So I can start working on the other 240 and just be able to just have a running project car. This is crazy. It's been, it's been not running for 10 months. That's wild. We're so close, so close. I'll come back later when I have an update or next time I come and work on the car. Probably tomorrow. What's up? I don't even know what day it is. You guys saw last time I couldn't get the gauges and shit working, but shout out to homie Junior. Homie came through and he helped. He came through and he helped me and he finally got the gauges working. Like everything should be straight on the car. Right now the final step is we literally just got the fenders on. That shit is straight. We need the front bumper and then we need to lower the back of the car so we could properly beat the system because we left the idling for like 10 15 minutes and it was starting to get a little bit hot. So I think there's still air in the system. Um, hopefully it's just a simple bleed and we get it fixed. So we're gonna drop the back so that the top is more raised and it bleeds out easier. And then also we're gonna put the front bumper and then once the car is rolling out of here, we're gonna bleed the power steering while it's on the ground. Cause we couldn't bleed it while it was raised up. Everything should go good and this car should drive out of here today. Fucking finally. never take parts off of the white 240 to put onto this car but check it out yes sir Okay, finally this shit is ready to test drive. Hopefully everything goes good. Damn, bro, as you can see, everything looks good. I'm gonna take it for a test drive right now. Um, but before I take it for a test drive, I wanna give Junio a huge shout out. Shout out Junio. If it wasn't for this man right here, this car wouldn't be driving right now. He helped me with the wiring, and then the final thing I needed, which was like the gauges and stuff, and just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, like bleeding the car. Um, but yeah, huge shout out to him, because fuck, bro. I was, ba was batallando with this car forever, man. But everything seems good. We're gonna take it for a test drive right now. Hopefully everything's straight. And from this point on, if anything is messed up, it should be something small. This car hasn't driven in 10 months, bro. But it's finally here. Let's go. 
That shit just looks like a drift missile. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Damn. Yes, sir. And then with the, it finally meets the white 242. Oh, this is Janelle's GR, by the way, too. Dope ass car. And it's on Workmeisters. That's wild. One day we'll get one of those on the channel. But yeah. Clean 240 finally meets the Drift 240. It sounds like shit because of all the rattling and shit, but damn, I'm so happy to have this fucking car back. All right, time to take this for a drive, see how it drives, and then I'll come back tomorrow and show it to you guys in the day. Oh yeah, the power steering feels good. Tap it, tap the gas. It feels pretty good. The exhaust seat is making me lose power for sure, so it feels kind of sluggish. Um, and right now it's overheating, so. All right, everything felt good. Like in the last clip you guys saw, they were recording me. Uh, everything felt good. The car feels a little bit sluggish. Um, it feels good when I get on it, but like just driving, if it sounds terrible and it feels not the best because of the two exhaust seats it has. So that's gonna be fixed on the road. I'm gonna try and get those fixed as soon as I can. Um, the major problem is the car was overheating. So looking at the car, we think it's this. Most likely it's that, because that cap was already bad, huh? Yeah, it was pretty bad. And then Janiel just touched it with his finger and it started leaking, and you can see some right there. So I think the cap, the spring in the cap is bad, so I'm gonna just get a new cap. Hopefully everything should be good. Um, I'll probably just buy one from AutoZone and replace that one and the one on the overflow. Car feels good, car looks good. And I can't wait to be driving this shit all the time again. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I need a GR so bad, bro. I'm gonna go to AutoZone right now, actually. Hit up the one that closes at midnight, and I'm gonna just get a cap. Come back, switch, put the cap back on, and go take it from the test drive. Hopefully, it doesn't overheat. If it does, I'll just park it back in here for the night and then figure it out. But um, my goal is to get it driving so I can take it home tonight. But we'll see what happens. Temp's still good. Damn, why is my fucking heart racing right now? <laughs> <laughs> 